Okay, take a, a really quick look at the prepositions of, prepositions of locations, uh, prepositions of location, and the fact that they are used with the verb estar. <clears throat> All right, think about it. We've talked about it in the past what we use estar to describe and to express, and one of those things was uh, location. So estar will be the verb that we use with our prepositions of location. So take a quick moment because I'm getting ready to erase this and jot these down. Um, the two points you need to remember right now is that we use a star with our prepositions of location and that depending on what comes after the preposition of location. Prepositions of location give a description of something's location in reference to something else whether it is beside something, behind, under, on top of, um, close to, outside of, uh, behind, that's what we're doing. So we have to have something in order, we have to have some point of reference in order to use our prepositions of location. So what comes in this blank right here would be that point of reference. So compared to this thing, or this thing is in front of some other thing, or this thing is behind some other thing. Well. And that blank is going to be that other thing. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's just say the school is beside the hotel. All right, I'll give you a really quick example here. La escuela está al lado de el hotel. Well, you're probably looking at that and saying, hmm, something looks um, a bit incorrect and you would be right because remember we can't have this we can't have this so it becomes al lado del hotel now that's only going to happen when you have something when you are using a preposition of location to give reference to something that is singular or masculine because if this would have been um, la iglesia we would not have made the contraction okay so with just about all of these you might have to make a contraction if you are using a singular masculine thing um, as reference. Okay, so go ahead and do this in your notes. Make all of these the possible contraction del. Okay, go ahead and make all of those a possible contraction of del or al for frente a. All right, now. I'm going to go ahead and erase and please continue uh, jotting these down and making that in your notes. Okay, so here we have six pictures, six examples that we're going to use um, with our prepositions of location. So what we've got is a person, we've got una caja, a box. All right, so we're going to be answering this question using our, preposition of, our prepositions of location. Donde está la persona? Okay, so you can go ahead and be thinking about these as I'm going through all of them. Um, see if you can do them on your own. All right, so watch me go through it first and then pause it and try to redo it. All right, so let's take a look. You got the first person right here. Um, you see the box is over him. So our question is, donde está la persona? So we need, we need to give the, the location of the person in relation to the box. So think about it, take a look. The person is under, yeah. So, la persona está debajo, debajo de la caja. La persona está debajo de la caja. Take a look. Our Think about it in English. A person is under the box, is below the box. La persona está debajo de la caja. Very good. All right, take a look at numero dos. Numero dos there, you've got the person, he's standing out the side of the box. So, donde está la persona? La persona. And if I'm going too fast and not giving you time to think about your own answer, pause it. La persona está which one? Al lado de la caja. All right. La persona está al lado de la caja. 
All right, número tres. You can only see a little bit, so you can only see from this up of him. So what do you think? What's going to be our location of the person there? La persona está, what do you think, what do you think? Detrás de la caja. All right, let's drop down to these below here. <clears throat> Número cuatro, you can see the person, he's kind of blocking the box that is in the background. So what do you think? Donde esta la persona? Think about it, pause it if you have to think. La persona está enfrente de La caja. Now there could have been a couple answers here. La persona está enfrente de, that one works. La persona está delante de, that one works. So could have been in any one of those, all right? Now take a look at numero cinco. Vamos a ver el numero cinco. You got la caja, hay una persona arriba. There is a person up, there is a person above. How are we going to give this person's location in relation to the box? Well, ¿Dónde está la persona? La persona está encima de la caja. La persona está encima de la caja. Muy bien. Excelente. All right, now this last one you've got to use your imagination. I've got this person here and I've tried to show that there is a lot of distance passing here. That's why that line is broken up. So he's not very close to this at all. All right, so donde esta la, per la persona? He's far away from. So pause it if you're thinking. La persona está lejos de la caja. <coughs> all right. There are six examples and you do the others the others the same way depending on their location um, to some other thing. All right, there, those are your prepositions of location. Remember, you've got basically two things to keep in mind. You've got number one, we're going to use the verb estar. And number two, if you are giving the, the location of something in relation to a singular masculine item, you're going to have to make del or al for the contraction. All right, best of luck with these. Please email me, email me with your questions or concerns. Gracias.